Don't believe the negative hype around sodium, salt. Most of it is flawed or completely wrong. Salt is essential for function, for life. And believe it or not, consuming too little of it has far more dangers for most people than consuming, quote unquote, too much. All right, so uh, Element T did, Element, did a, a phenomenal post on Instagram. I'm going to read you some of the stuff because it's exceptional. And I'll, I'll tell you guys why, uh, the reasons why we still hear. There's fear mongering still around salt, I there believe. There is, totally. So it's a, it was a great post. I love posts like this because they have data. They talk about here's what's, uh, you know, accepted um, common knowledge. Here's why a lot of it's wrong. And here's, here's what's really going on. Right. Okay. So the post says that the world health organization recommends a worldwide effort to reduce the average daily intake of sodium to, uh, about two grams uh, of salt. So it's based on the premise that lowering sodium intake would lower blood pressure, leading to fewer strokes, heart attacks and heart failure. Right. So this is one of those things where they're like, okay, mm. if this does this, then this means that. So like, okay, if we get everybody to reduce their salt, we should get lower, less heart attacks, less strokes. Therefore, it's going to cause uh, improvements in health or whatever. But check out these studies, okay? 2011 study published in the Journal of American Medical Association shows that cardiovascular events were higher in individuals consuming less than three grams of sodium per day. The lowest rate of events was at four to six grams of sodium per day. In 2014, meta-analysis shows that sodium intakes less than 2.6 grams a day were associated with increased cardiovascular disease events and all-cause mortality compared to intakes that were between 2.6 to 5 grams a day. In 2017, the Framingham offspring, offspring study showed that individuals who consume less than 2.5 grams of sodium per day had consistently higher blood pressure than those who consumed 2.5 grams. So why the conflicting information? Mm. Why do they keep recommending you know lower sodium? Because the amount of people that eat a high processed diet that have tons of sodium. Cause if you compare, I remember I saw, I remember seeing this a long time ago. I saw like this, this chart of like one fast food meal yeah. compared to like salting your, your whole food. So if you made your food and you salted every single meal, like for like a week, it would, it, and it's this it comparison. Come close. Yeah. It was like, yeah. The one fast food meal was more sodium than salting every meal you ate on Whole Foods, like for a week. Yeah, what th what this is, what's likely is that this is a uh, a correlation um, that they're trying to make uh, a part of, uh, or trying to blame, or or connect to the cause, right? So, if you just look at general data, and you look at you know Americans, and you say, "Wow, look at this." Americans who consume a lot of sodium are sicker, fatter, have more strokes and more heart attacks. That's true. It's not the sodium though. It's the fact that exactly what you said, yeah. that uh, heavily processed foods tend to, well actually tend to always consume a Lost. ton of sodium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what they're seeing is not the result of the sodium, but rather the result of the fact that these people are eating Heavily processed and that's, foods probably eat more calories, are overweight because of that, and so on. And right. that's because it has to, right? To preserve it, is that the it's just that, flavor? Remember, high, you know, heavily processed yeah. foods. Most of the the research that goes in uh, to the foods, most of the investment that goes into these foods, is into making them hyper palatable. And there's three main ingredients to hyper palatability: like salt, sugar, salt, fat. Sugar, salt, fat. sugar, and fat. Yeah. Every every chef, every anybody who's ever studied how to make food taste good knows that those are the three key ingredients to hyper palatability, right? Salt and sugar, and then fat with the mouthfeel. If you combine those three things yeah. in the right proportions, uh, you can make food more pleasurable. And if you have something that let's say, let's say you advertise something as low fat, well, we've, re we've removed one of the things that um, improves hyper, uh, improves palatability. So what we're going to do right. to offset that is increase the, sh the sugar and the sodium, for example, or use all three.
it's funny to taste um like specific cook i i'm i kind of judge this based on cookies like so i went to crumble <laughs> and was like what oh, wow how is this like so much tastier and it's it's loaded with butter oh, like yeah. you you come to find out the amount of calories and like how dense it is it's it's hard to eat like a whole cookie no a whole cookies a lot bro they're not even they cookies. like a quarter they're, of one they're of like cookies. cake it is it's like it's a really dense cake but i mean it's delicious but it again they just ramp up like one one factor like the yeah. fat like to, to the nth degree did yeah. you look up well, I, I was curious actually the last time i had one of those i was like man i wonder what the calorie I, oh it's it's i don't it's, even want what, it's it. horrific i mean yeah. you're like one Bro, cookie, they're like this one big only like, you like might this say big. like it's a thousand i would yeah. guess a thousand yeah. calories it's yeah. gotta be and the yeah. frosting on them on some of them is like that thick yeah. right it's like another cookie yeah i had like a few bites and you know it's just one of those things that's on the way up to trucky and and the kids really want it and it's like oh my god dude i just can't i couldn't believe like the level like they've gotten with cookies. Oh, Am really I a bad person for looking into like starting one of those franchises? I, <laughs> I did. I looked all into to like start one. Yeah, yeah. I looked. I mean, they're exploding, bro. Everywhere. You're just, you're just hedging, is what you're doing. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to get everybody healthy, but just in case they don't, I'm <laughs> yeah. still gonna get, I'm still gonna get rich. What does that say, Doug? Oh, wow. Yeah. Each cookie is. Oh, it's less than I thought. About no, five to six hundred, bro. But it's one cookie, five to six hundred yeah. calories. It's a meal. I mean, also, and, each cookie is a meal. Allowed to be twenty percent off. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, true. that's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And that's what people are. Saying. Okay, what's what's twenty percent of six hundred and thirty? Oh, it could be another hundred. It could be another hundred. Over seven hundred calories. calories, like seven fifty or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, that's a big ass difference. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. But yeah, back to the sodium. Yeah. Um, it's this is terrible because now look, there are specific uh, segments of the population, and you know who and you'll know this if this is you, right? Where you have health issues, you 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 work with a doctor or kidney specialist. Like we got to reduce your sodium. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But like everybody else, if you're, if you're otherwise, if you're overweight, high blood pressure, you're not healthy or whatever, you get leaner. Mm -hmm. Well, like trying to cut sodium is, uh, it's, that's not, that's not necessarily what the problem is. And then even worse, here's what the problem, here's the worst part of it is forget the population of people who are really sick because really sick people are not the same as uh, as otherwise healthy people in terms of how their bodies react to foods and, mm -hmm. and, and certain things. If you're otherwise healthy, and especially if you're fit and healthy, especially if you exercise and you're healthy, here you are health conscious and you hear this news about salt. And you're like, you know what? I'm a health conscious person. I watch what I eat. I like to work out. So I should probably eat a low sodium diet. No, low sodium when you're active and fit and healthy is actually not just not going to help you. It's going to make you sicker and worse. It's going to increase your risk of things like uh, cardiovascular issues and, uh, and and not not and also just poor performance. So sodium is one of the cheapest, most effective ways that an athlete can in, in, improve their performance, especially people who don't eat heavily processed foods. What if you what if you eat a moderately processed diet? Um, but still manage calories low. So let's say I'm I'm like let's say my maintenance is three thousand calories, oh, I and I eat out at least once, maybe twice a day. But I still manage to to land around twenty five or twenty eight hundred calories. Uh, do you think one um, I'm getting enough sodium from that just because I'm eating out twice a day, uh, or because I'm low calorie, I could still afford to even have intake even more salt. Yeah, you're probably, I mean, probably yes, but the, the, of course, the, that's a different conversation, right? The challenge then becomes how how hard are you making it on yourself to maintain the right amount of calories? Because when you're eating heavily processed foods, it, it makes it a lot harder. It's mm -hmm. just a lot more challenging because they're so, I mean, they're engineered to make you overeat. But, you know, athletes should probably consume, definitely not the two grams or whatever they were recommending, mm. probably closer to three to four. If you sweat a lot, maybe even more. Oh yeah. yeah. The electrolyte balance off. Like it, it's interesting. It was a lot of the, the paleo diet was uh, something that a lot of athletes were doing at the time and noticing, CrossFit. yeah, that they, they just were not getting the kind of output in the, in the type of performance that, um, you know, was optimal. And it, it and, and they didn't even really realize it was like their their salt intake because they're they're such natural whole food driven, which is like what most like health conscious people are trying to do. But it, like again, when they go to exert um, 
all this energy and you know they're not their their balance is way off they're not retaining that intracellular fluid and they're not like utilizing uh that optimal salt intake it's it really affects uh your output and can keep in mind too you balance out salt with uh magnesium and potassium these are the other electrolytes you know there's just pure sodium then you can get like himalayan pink salt or other types of salt that are more balanced with their minerals versus like the you know, the, the pure white, you know, salt that you get, that's just sodium. There's nothing else right. in it. So, you know, natural salts are better. And then if you want to supplement with electrolytes, um, you want something that's you know, like, like element has all that stuff. I mean, by the way, again, I, I, I just read you the stats. The world health organization says two grams or less. I have two grams of sodium before breakfast. Okay. I have one packet of element before and during my workout. And then another one by the back half of my workout and after. So I'm already hitting two grams before even eating breakfast. Is that is is there is that a gram in each one? Is there's that, a gram. There's a gram in there's each There's a gram one. in each packet. So that's me, right? I would say the, the average athlete or whatever, probably one packet during the workout is probably plenty. I do I I've already identified that if I do like half before. Well, you also during, are really good about eating whole foods. Like you eat out probably the least, uh, maybe Doug, actually, I'd say the least. Out, yeah. of, out of all of us, I'd say Doug and you probably eat out the, the least. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense that you would, you would supplement with at least two of those packets. Mm -hmm. I'm one because I actually still, you know, yesterday, that's why I was asking you. I mean, I had Nick the Greek eating out and then I had a poke bowl eating out, which I also put soy sauce on, which is loaded full yeah. of sodium. A day like that, I might not take a packet like now, that. Now, you know what, you know what's interesting? I, you know, we say processed foods. There's still a hierarchy, I would say, with the, with those. I think if it's in a box or a wrapper, it's that's like the worst kind. Eating out at restaurants, there's so many different, there's a variety of choices that you can eat out at restaurants and still be, like yeah. I see your choices when you eat out. Right, right. I wouldn't put that in the same category as like, you know, like a frozen no, meal no. or boxed or, uh, crackers food, or chips. Jack yeah. Two Stone or pizza or something. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 I'm getting... <laughs> You know, Nick right, the guys. Greek, which is like a chicken <laughs> kebab type yeah. of meal. I'm getting like, you know, teriyaki chicken type bowls. I'm doing like chipotles. I'm doing like, so a poke bowl. That's like the type typical. If I eat out, that's how I'm eating out. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but still, even those are, are, they're loaded with sodium. I mean, they got a lot more sodium. You're than sure. A, you know, than your, your typical, you know, obviously whole foods that you make yourself. So yeah, sure. you know, along these lines, um, I've actually noticed in, um, this is, is interesting for me to, to kind of observe like what's popular with kids and like with drink choices and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of mentioned that like, uh, there's a lot of, um, attention and, and emphasis now on like Gatorade versus prime. And, oh, and so we're yeah. talking about like, element which is like efficacious doses of that yeah. and like you know it's so it's like at some point you got to compromise to make it like taste like more sugary and like something that's mm -hmm. like um more mainstream and so it's like you have your two now kind of versions of that which is prime and, and gatorade and it literally is like they're having their own little cola wars right now within like are they really? like yeah like junior high kind of high school and they're all every like even when we were up in in um tahoe and i was just sitting there listening to these kids running around they were like fighting over like which one was better gatorade or prime whoa what yeah boy well, i i really think that the as from a marketing perspective these companies know that there's like there's really two types of people that you're marketing to you're either marketing to the well-informed health right. and fitness person right. who is going to see right between, like read between the lines on that and go like, oh no, that's not what I want. I want something on on like the like an element type of, of a choice. And then there's people that have heard electrolytes are good and I know that I should probably do that, but are not informed whatsoever and are going to be easily targeted as like, oh, they think they're making a good choice by doing that. Oh, and by the way, it tastes so can good. I, can so I it's just, easy to justify. Can I just say how yeah. inappropriate Prime would be for kids? Yeah. It's, I think, 200 milligrams of caffeine for a can. Yeah, caffeine. Oh, there's caffeine in it? Yeah. 200 milligrams. Yeah. Are you sure? It's an energy yeah, it drink. Is, yes. It's it's an energy I drink. I didn't realize that either until I looked it up. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's an energy drink. Are you are you fact-checking that? Yeah, that is correct. 200 milligrams. Oh, shit. You, you, like, okay. Uh, oh, you that's know, why it's catching it's, it's not. That's not entirely true. Why? Okay, yeah. So there's the energy drink. There's two drinks. versions, right? Yeah, there's energy drink, which is the can, and then there's the like the sports drink. Okay, that's okay. A, yeah. And you can tell the difference. The yeah. sports drink looks like a Gatorade bottle, yes. and the energy drink looks like a That doesn't drink. have caffeine, right? No. Okay, okay, so that doesn't have caffeine. So one of them it does, one of them doesn't. Okay, okay yeah. Nonetheless, uh, are there regulations on, like, can a kid, can a 10-year-old, can an 11-year-old or a 12-year-old 
walk into a 7-Eleven and buy a 200 milligram caffeine drink? Probably. Yeah. Yes. That is, can I, I know, just, I have a problem bro, they with that do it, too. Do you, do you, know, if, you know how dangerous you, that is? I, I, yeah. When was the last time you've been to Starbucks? It blows my mind every time I'm in Starbucks. Do you know how dangerous that is? There's always like three or four kids that are in there that are ordering like loaded, you know, like frappuccino, frappuccino with an extra shot. shot. And, like, yeah. Wow. I, I've seen the same wow. thing. Wow. That, it, it's Kathy, crazy. If, I mean, look, to be to be totally clear. It's funny to me how we demonize certain things and then like we've just totally like accept that when it's a drug. It's yeah. a it's it's a classic it's drug. Productive. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's a classic drug. It has uh it's it it's deadly at like ten times their efficacious dose, which is a terrible like that's that's a it's a deadly compound. It can be very deadly, it can kill people very easily. It's addictive, it has all the classic addictive properties of drugs. You you develop a tolerance mm -hmm. and then you have terrible withdrawal when you go off. To be clear, if caffeine were discovered today, it would not be legal. They would not, they would make it an illegal drug, 100% across the board. But for some reason, a kid can go buy, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That wow. blows my mind. They could do that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, I then, hey, then again, they prescribe yeah. them freaking meth too, so. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what Adderall is. Right? That's yeah. exactly what Adderall yeah, is, so yeah. that is so crazy to me. All right, today's workout program giveaway maps strong. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we drop it, and uh, if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. By the way, you also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. You got to do all that. Also, we have a huge sale this month. Maps Anabolic, the original Maps program, 50% off, and then Maps Split, one of our most advanced bodybuilder-style workout programs, also 50% off. If you're interested in one or both of them, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, yeah. uh, more si more studies on fitness. There's like some, this is kind of cool, right? Um, there's some little bit of controversy in the, in the muscle building world around studies that are coming out showing that loading a muscle in the stretch position builds more muscle than in other positions. I, so hate, like, st I hate studies. Well, like first- this. Let's start here. Let's be. Let's start here, and and then we'll move to. I know exactly mm. where you're gonna go, Adam, because um, then people go too far with it. Yeah. yeah. But let's start here. Loading a muscle in a stretch position, so exactly like we did in Maps Anabolic Advanced, where at the end of um, your workouts and the failure weeks, you're holding uh -huh. a stretch like a fly, you know, in the, in the bottom position at the end of the uh, chest workout, or stretching the lats, you know, for time and the adding the back workout and so on. Okay. <laughs> Doing so builds three times more muscle, three times more muscle than loading other positions of the muscle, which is true. So that's true. So that's really cool. Cool science. Now, here's where people went too far. Now you've got these fitness people who are saying, you should just train your muscles in the stretch position. Avoid <laughs> exercises that squeeze the muscle or work in the mid range. Yeah, this isn't replacing you know these other beneficial ways of training. It's just, just another thing to consider. It's not only that, but it's a thing that I, I think I've said on this damn show a hundred times. It's like yeah. okay, right now it is the most effective thing, or three times when in a, in a controlled study of six to twelve weeks. But do that every single workout for a year and, and avoid all the other stuff. And yeah, and report back to me uh, on the the benefits of it. Then your body is un shelf life though. unbelievably intelligent with its ability to adapt to whatever stimulus that you give it. And so when we do these studies in these small windows, it's really easy to stimulate it in a novel way and mm -hmm. show how impactful and amazing it is, but you're missing the story, the whole story, if you don't understand how the body adapts. And so, and, and hopefully our audience who's been listening to us and has been following the programs, there's a reason why not every one of our programs has that in it mm -hmm. yeah. because it would be ridiculous to do that in every single program. It makes sense to yeah. interrupt your basic, Plus your inappropriately applied, like that's like yeah. a destiny for injury. You know, yeah. it's like it. Uh, people just have to realize there's like some of these techniques. Um, you know, they're advanced and they're for a reason, and and they're programmed in a sequence and that allows for a certain amount of rest, that allows for a certain amount of intention going into it, and so that's the thing. It's like it's. I don't, there's a lot of different things you can do the body to get to stimulate, uh, uh, you know, a muscle signal. Yeah. Look in head to head comparisons, there are rep ranges that build more muscle. There are specific set and volume ranges that build more muscle. There's specific, uh, exercises that build more muscle There's specific intensity levels that build more muscle. 
But what we're missing out of that conversation is that all the other ones that are tested also build muscle. So it's not like they don't. And then here's the other big one. The body adapts exactly what you guys are saying. And so if you only do one all the time, even if it's the best in a head to head, eventually it becomes the worst. That's right. Because it stops working for your body. So, and then by the way, the worst one ends up being the best because yeah. it's so novel. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then, the, then, the, then the formula changes completely. So, and now, now, uh, Brett Contreras is going off on this right now, right? Cause people are coming after him, coming after his, you know, signature exercise, the, the, you know, the, the hip thrust. Oh, Cause it's not in a stretch. Right. And everybody's like, Oh, position. see short range of motion. And it's for, and it's focused more on the contraction. It's already position. been proven to build muscle. Yeah. 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 So, so everybody's like, Oh, see squats are better for glute growth because you could stretch them at the bottom hip thrusts are a waste of time. And hey, because, I'll tell you what, the, I, that's true. I still, I still think that's true. That what that no I that mean, that squatting is still I still stand by and I've said that since the very beginning even when the glute the the floor bridge was you know the, oh that it's the best glute builder yeah sure yeah but are you gonna be like don't do no absolutely not I would never say <laughs> yeah, that that's so it's, it's a, and and there it's like one of it's it's not quite a pure isolation exercise but it's close to an isolation exercise it is one of the the best isolation exercises for the glutes because you can load it. Yes. Yeah. You can load it like you can't load a, a kickback yeah. or like a freaking dog pee. And I'll like, say this. If right. you have difficulty building your glutes with traditional glute exercises, the hip it's thrust is a superior exercise. That's right. Yeah. Because it is like an isolation exercise. Because it teaches you how to squeeze and connect. Yes. That's why people who are like, oh my God, my butt didn't grow with squats now grows with hip thrust. That's right. But so, but now he's going against and he's like, well, we got to see more data. It doesn't show. It's like, look, Brett, that's not the point. The point is yeah, they wow. all work. And it's the right mix of things that gives you the best results. And if you just do one thing all the time, uh, then it eventually stops but working. That's why a study like this will kind of like take fire because not a lot of people are applying this technique. And it's like it's super novel to like your everyday average kind of gym goer. Yeah. They're like, wow, this really worked yeah. for me. But it is cool that that this – Also keep in mind that – there's other things that come into play with, uh, you know, the choice of a, a, an exercise than just what builds, what signals the most muscle too. Like, do you think holding your weights in a stretch position all the time would be advantageous for like mobility and flexibility no. and like functional yeah, overall movement? Like yeah. I think if you just did that, like what that would do to <laughs> yes. function in your yeah. movement. Could you yeah. imagine? Which I, then would eventually lead to what? Less yeah. muscle. That's right. Muscle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So like we, people we, thinking like 16 week intervals, don't they? Yes. We, that's <laughs> because that's how <laughs> that's we, it. that's, that's how we, st that's how know. we study it. That's yeah. why I hate, I hate when we get in, when our space and you're right like what are you doing brett like you're so much smarter than that to even get into an argument like that if people are too stupid to see it and they're going to try and come at you like with the track record that he has too and the amount of tra ass transformations that guy has <laughs> it's like how is that not ass enough formations like, yes dude <laughs> the guy's got like freaking a Ten thousand booties that he's built from doing that. Like, if that's not yeah. enough for you guys, yeah. like, Grade come on, a, you know? seriously. Yeah. But what I was gonna say is, what's cool about these da this data that's coming out is, uh, I mean, we had just released anabolic advanced with the weighted stretch, you know, kind of component, and I love it. Now, data, you know, more data is coming out confirming what uh, I'd say bodybuilders had have identified for a long time, which is funny. You know, this old bodybuilder wisdom just keeps getting confirmed by studies. They ignore bodybuilders for decades. Oh, you're dumb. That's not what's happening. And then, oh, yeah, well, data shows that you guys are actually At right. what point do you think, because, I mean, I know I, I probably get um, labeled as the, the, the anti-science guy because I talk so much shit about when you bring up a study or whatever. It's but don't you, just don't, yeah, don't, don't you, don't you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do we know they're He's real? He's an anti-dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> so, Believer. Do you, yeah. do, you, do you not believe being the science guy, okay, of us? That there's somewhat of a bell curve of like, at what point do we have too much studies about a subject? Right. Too much? Yes. Or or when, Cause, cause or you, when the studies kind of start to confuse people? Yes. Oh. So there's got to be a bell curve of like, hey, studies. this this was yeah. really good. This pointed us in the right direction. Boy, this was, man, when we learned this, this like, made huge difference in, yeah. in, in society. Here, at what point is it overkill? Here's and, what I... Here's, and, we, and we start to just confuse people and they and we're yes, doing worse i agree with you i so i know where you're going with this so here's the problem i love science but don't worship it mm -hmm. it is not a it is not a belief system people are like i believe in science like get out of my face with that like it's like it's a method yeah it's not something you believe in it's just a method of testing hypothesis looking at data looking at that data doing more replicating tests replicating it yes so it, uh when people worship science becomes a problem because then what happens is they throw out wisdom and common sense yeah so they'll be like you know 
I know when my kids are on social media and their devices all day long, they act like little shits and they're disconnected. But mm-hmm. I just read a study that said there's no harm. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, come on, bro. It's like, really not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. throw, like, like, there's common sense, there's wisdom, and there's science. You got to use all of it. And, and science often follows anecdote. What I mean by that is a lot of times scientists study things because there's been so much anecdote saying that something works. And they go, let's go study it mm-hmm. and see what's going on. But until that study comes out to prove it, there's a lot of people like, well, that's not true. I know the bodybuilders are saying that when you stretch it, you know, train a stretch muscle that you build more muscle, but I don't know any data that sh- shows that. Therefore, it's not true. No, that doesn't mean it's not true. It, they've been talking about for decades, there's something that's happening. You can try to explain it. We haven't figured out what the mechanism is yet, but let's 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 not discount it just because we don't have the study to show it. And then when the study comes out, if it counters all your common sense and wisdom, it's okay to question it. Like yeah. there's nothing wrong with questioning, yeah. you know, because how many, like, for example, how many drugs are pulled off the market every year? Right. Yeah. I, think, I think it's like hundreds. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, it's I think, a lot. The, I think the fact that we, we're, we are finding ourselves in this era right now. And we're, I mean, we're all 40, 40 plus years old. So we've been around for a little bit enough to see this. Like, it don't, doesn't it almost feel like we've, we've watched this like almost full circle we're like the, the the methods of training and stuff like that, and, yeah. and the things mm-hmm. that we're, like we're getting back to like you're saying like this old yeah old wisdom that's been around forever, and we've we've done enough studies to go and 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 prove ourselves right, then prove ourselves wrong, then reprove again, and then you know challenge what it is? that. And it's like and then we are landing back really close to what people have been doing for a hundred years, bro. You know what's funny about that? It's this is such we're such narcissists, right? Yeah. We think that people from a few, just because we've progressed in some ways doesn't mean that we're smarter yeah. or that we've progressed in other ways or that we haven't regressed. So we often look back a few generations or especially when we go back thousands of years and we think people are stupid. Yeah, They didn't know anything. They're we're so dumb. arrogant elitist society. Dude, dude. D- dude, these ancient Sumerians and Egyptians and Romans, I mean, they did shit with engineering. Yeah, without the tools that we had. We, right. like, <laughs> like, <laughs> can't even, we can't even describe how they did that. Like, there's no <laughs> there's no actual, like, theory that's sound that we have for oh, a lot of these things that they've constructed. They, they were able to predict, uh, you know, um, comets and constellations and shit for thousands of years. Calendars are still accurate today. And how did they do it? They just literally laid down and watched the stars and somehow did their own mathematical equations to figure stuff like this out. I remember one, I remember when I was, uh, let's see, I was probably 20. And uh, at the time I was doing judo and I was really starting to get more into, into competing of grappling. I remember I learned this particular grappling move and I remember someone taught it to me and they're like, Oh, it's this new way of tech, you know, of stopping a, a takedown, and then you do this type of thing. It's really cool. It's a new technique, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool. It's a new thing. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. No one's gonna know what you know what's going on, and it's gonna really work really well." Anyway, I went to on vacation to uh, France, and we were in the Louvre Museum. Beautiful, by, by the way, one of my favorite places uh, ever. The Louvre is amazing. Yeah. And we're walking through, and there's all these. It's, I mean, you could take you could do you could do this for three days. You could go through the whole thing and not see everything. And I remember there was this tablet. It was like this big. And it was, uh, I think it was it was Greek. So it was from ancient Greece. And it was showing Greek wrestlers. So it's like thousands of years old, okay? And I'm looking at the the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the wrestling move. That you just learned? <laughs> it's the one I learned. I'm looking at it. I'm like, bro, this is thousands of years old. Dudes were doing the same move I just learned. We think we're all cool inventing. Yeah, dude. Things. We think we're such badasses yeah. because of that. Did you? <laughs> hey, by the way, did you That's know the, the most decorated Olympian of all time? Let me see if I let me get let me get these statistics right. I wrote this down. The most decorated Olympian of all time was Milo of Croton. Hmm. He was a wrestler. You ready for this? 1200 wins. 1200 hundred wins I feel and like one loss. This guy up a long time ago. Wow. 1201 was his record. Wow. For wrestling. You know who the second was? This is the guy that Dude, he, the guy that beat him is like, yeah. Yeah, either that or he got lucky. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, a bee stung yeah, him in yeah. the face and then he, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how are you that one guy that beat him, bro? <laughs> you know who second is? The yeah. second best one of the best most decorated Olympians but best wrestler of all time. This guy was in modern times. I've, I've talked about him many times on the podcast. Alexander Carolyn. Mm. You know what his record was? Mm. 887 wins and two losses. Damn. What kind of a beast is that? That's, that he went that many times, dude. That's a lot. Who was it? On a whole other level. Who, was it Dennis? Our friend Dennis, who um, mm-hmm. he was an alternate in Greco-Roman for Olympics. Yeah. And I mean, he's just a badass. Guy's he's, a black he's belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And, 
Didn't you train with him for a little uh-huh. bit? Yeah, I was training with How him. How did it feel to bit. grapple the dude that? Oh, my God. That guy's so big. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. You're just like this little baby all of a sudden. Like, like, Justin's God, a big dude. <laughs> so people, I, there's just, I want to you know, see that. There's different people out there. Yeah. Yeah, different sizes. So he says that he went to Russia. This is way after Alexander, you know, he was like retired and he's like, I don't know how old he was at the time, 50-something or whatever. Yeah. And Alexander was teaching like the wrestlers the like moves. And Dennis is a badass. This guy was an alternate in the Olympics in Greco-Roman, competed in the World Abu Dhabi Championships a long time ago. Yeah. And he said Alexander like just like grabbed him or whatever and started messing with him. He's like, he left me with bruises. He was just demonstrating shit. And he's like, his hands were so heavy <laughs> and strong that he left it's bruises. It's hard to control the amount of force that he could produce. Yeah, you dude. Know? It's, my, yeah, there's people like that out there. On my body. Anyway. There, there is a viral picture right now of Kawhi Leonard and- um, Who? Uh, he's a basketball player. Okay. And they're and he's uh and he's walking with Paul George, so two like massive dudes in the NBA, and they're like walking next to each other and give each other a high fan high high five, and Kawhi Leonard's nickname is is the the claw because he's defensively he always gets steals for that and he's got like these these hands on him and you see that see if Doug could pull it up pull up Leonard and Paul George maybe you can get it first Andrew uh, hands picture it's going viral right now it's only this last week or like that. And so if you've ever seen, I don't know if, so Michael Jordan had this book and I'll never forget. I had it as a kid and it had his a real, his real size of oh. his hands. And so you could put your hands on there uh-uh. and my, my hands fit inside of his palm. So and you my, got big hands. Yeah. And so, wow. right. And so, oh my God, look at bro. <laughs> These are both. Okay. You're talking about like, a, like Paul George is like what? Six, He's another seven, guy with big hands. Massive. Big hands. Massive. Bro. Yeah. He could slap you from Dude, across Lord. the street. Is that yeah. wild or what? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, you're talking about another giant dude that's yeah. doing that. So it's not like Paul George has got tiny little baby hands. He's got massive hands himself. And isn't that great? Hey, what would you, you do if you went to your proctologist appointment? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm that guy, out, that guy walks out. I got to check your... Uh, <laughs> no, no, you're not, bro. I told you. Call him oh, the nurse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that happened to you, right? Happened, yeah, it was like this big like Turkish guy. You know, with like <laughs> hairy fingers and everything. And they're like all like these sausages. How is that even possible? I feel like that would be part of like the job application of like, yeah. can we see your hands, please? Well, I thought it was going to be like a nurse or something. And, uh, you know, and then he puts the glove on. I'm like, oh, my my God, no! <laughs> that fucking Thanos <laughs> locks the door. You know? <laughs> Just as like, Hoo! Oh, Hoo! I told you guys when I ate lunch uh, with uh, Magic uh, Magic Johnson, right? Oh, yeah, he used yeah. To work for, yeah, yeah. He used to work. He was a uh, sponsored by Twenty Four Fitness. Too. He's massive. Yeah, I sat next to him. And I remember he's like, you know, what's crazy is he was a point guard. How crazy is that? When you think about that, like he's yeah. the small guy on the court. I, I mean, well, I <laughs> yeah, mean, right? to me, he was the biggest dude I've ever seen in my life because yeah. I'd never been been next to a, a pro NBA player. And he sat like next to me, and, and at the time, Mastroff introduced us, and he's like, "This is Sal, he's young prodigy coming up." But Magic says, "Oh, nice to meet you, man." And he gives me a high five, and I was like, like "Whoa, <laughs> this is wild! Yeah. This is crazy." Is Dude, so spe- speaking of crazy, you know what movie I watched last night? Oh, uh, John Wick, the Dude. new one. Yeah, uh, bro, I love the Wick series. There's yeah, like, it's action just, on action. It's, it's just, the it's, it's the like just violence. Porn. It's the director. That's why. It's what. Look him up, Doug. I think he's the same one who did the Bullet Train, which I I love that movie. Bullet Train was f- great. Yeah. So good. It was it great. Be, so yeah. good. I remember but, I was trying to get you guys to watch that for a while, and finally got you guys. You to know what watch I like it. about? No, that that's a not, fun movie. That's not who you were thinking, Adam. Oh, that's oh yeah, Chad Stileski. I don't even know who that guy is. Chad, of course. Yeah, dude. I didn't know Chad. Chad, Chad, uh, Chad directed it. Yeah. I thought it, I could have sworn that it was the same director that did that. No, uh, no. Well, well, I so it's um so it lived up to all the action. Uh, here's the first one. Here's what I like about it is that <clears throat> they don't pretend. It's not like they're making the movie like we got to put a good plot. <laughs> this has to make sense. They're it's like, an afterthought. No, yeah, none of this is gonna make sense. <clears throat> Nobody cares about the plot. 50 million people are going to shoot at him. Nobody's yeah. going to hit him. Right. He'll never get tired. At one point, there's a scene where John Wick, he's run, he's literally, he's at the top of like, like a building. It's like th- the third story. He runs through the window. Yeah. So he falls out of a building, crashes on a car, hits the ground, right? He gets and then up. He's like, like he gets, Ouch. yeah, he gets up. And he's like, Ugh, uh, <laughs> oh, my, and he my, starts, my ribs hurt. And, yeah. And he starts running. <laughs> And you, and you can hear the guys because a bunch of dudes watching it. Everybody starts laughing in the yeah. theater. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, they like left him for dead, like shot him in the stomach. Like last time, uh, the last movie I watched of his and it's just like, oh, he's just still, dude, keep, and, keeps on going. And the car chase scenes were amazing, but every car that he like steals to like drive away from was a 
super rare classic muscle car. So I'm like, <laughs> telling my, so convenient. I'm sitting there with my <laughs> yeah. son, yeah. and I'm like, bro, you would, ne-, and they were in Paris of all things. Like you would never see that just, car anywhere. Just let not alone even in Paris. one classic car in Paris. Yeah, like, and then on. the other guy's got another classic car. Yeah, I don't like, think I ever like, saw a classic car in Paris. No, no, no. no this, yeah, they have all the little tiny. They have the little tiny cars. Yeah, they don't fit. No. They, like there's nowhere to park them. Like you can't be on the roads. Well, you like, ain't gonna see that anywhere. Anyway, yeah, you know exactly. You're not gonna see a GTO judge driving down yeah. the, the road. Let alone a yeah, that's that's already rare. <laughs> yeah, but it was <laughs> fun. Funny. It was fun, dude. It was a good movie. The fight uh, scenes yeah. are good because um, they incorporate uh, like uh, I, I mean I I saw jujitsu. Yeah. It's like judo. real real MMA. Uh, moves and in, in, uh, uh, martial arts. Yeah, just all kinds of stuff. And Keanu, I mean, he's got to do a lot of training to do some of that stuff, you know, because that's, uh, that's, a, that's the, the positions and, and movements were brutal. Yeah, I heard, I heard too, um, like he improvises a lot of the, with the stuff with the, with the pistol and all that too. So uh, like the ways that he can kind of manipulate it and use it as a weapon. Bro, like, you know, I was counting, I was counting at one point how many, rounds uh, this pistol. don't do that i'm like bro it's like 40 <laughs> yeah, yeah. 50 rounds and that where the hell they- <laughs> it's like a video game yeah. you know you just never have limited ammo did i tell you guys speaking of rounds and did i tell you guys the um so i watched the the newest um i've already seen like two or three documentaries on this uh and just i know you like this type of weird shit uh the waco texas oh yeah did you watch the yeah. new netflix one mm-hmm. yeah the new netflix one they said a stat that i actually didn't know do you know the that was the most bullets on U.S. soil spread since the Civil War. Wow. What? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was it was hellfire. Like, it, that's what's cool about this series, because the other ones preceding it were all just about the cult and, like, what started the cult. And everything. Yeah. This was actually from the perspective of the ATF and How they fucked FBI. Up. Yeah. One of the biggest, uh, I mean, that's like the <clears throat> biggest black eyes on the- in For the, yeah. sure. Yep. I mean- And you four. see the how that all sort of unraveled in, in the lack of communication between um, negotiators and then also the aggressive unit that's in there trying to to take them out Did because they, they tank killed agents. Point? Bro, yes. Yeah. They, they brought in like the, like the craziest tanks because they had a 50 cal. They had 50 cal. And so they wanted. They brought in a tank that actually could. They originally had other tanks that a fifty yeah. cal would penetrate. Then they brought like the craziest yeah. tank that we have. That's messed up. Because it didn't matter yeah. if they were in body armor or anything. Like yeah. yeah, they had the the kind of weaponry to. And then in a built in a building that had probably fifty plus kids here driving it through the walls. Oh. And then shooting ga- gas it, it bombs. It was horrific. Oh, it was. I didn't know that stat though. I thought yeah. that was crazy, crazy to think that, that was the most bullets ever spilled on U.S. soil since the Civil War. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's wild. So so in a situation like that, how do you handle something like that? I mean, they obviously went in with force, and that turned out bad. They ended up yeah. killing a bunch of innocent children. Right. How do you handle a situation Well, they like had that? somebody. They had an inside person. They did, yeah. They so had they, had an, they had an inside agent that was in the cult. Yeah, they had a, an agent in the cult. And so, I don't know, wait till the the main dude is grocery shopping or leaves the compound one day and then and then get him. Yeah. But to, to go in well, when you know that there's that many ch- women and children and stuff in there, like apparently that. Apparently, the, the, I mean, the plan initially was to catch him with the element of surprise, but that totally like backfired because they were actually going towards the, the compound and got lost, got talk, got lost, talked to a um, mailman that was like on route. Turns out the mail person was part of the cult, like, or at least tied in with like oh, so he told people them. in this and warned them ahead of time, you know, completely like uh, uprooted their entire plan for a surprise. So wow. they didn't have that on their side. And they and knew now that this though. debacle. So they knew that the element of surprise was gone and they still proceeded. And like half the yeah. guys were saying like, we shouldn't we go. We shouldn't go because now we don't have any, they have all the advantage now. Yeah. Wow. And yet they still. Do went. you guys remember those, oh, this is a while ago. I don't know if we'll be able to find this. I don't know if it was a farmer. There's a couple farmers where the, the government wanted to go in, move in on the land and the farmer and a bunch of other people with their stood there with their their guns mm-hmm. and said no you need to have a warrant or whatever and it was a standoff yeah. this happened like i, I want to say within the last 10 years mm-hmm. yes yeah, the bundy there it is standoff what was the whole deal with that what was the whole <laughs> deal with that, that doug does anybody know mm-hmm. yeah so know. the blm suspends the roundup of trespassing cattle protesters disperse incident diffuse i i I'm just reading headlines here. So that was a situation where the That's government- 2014, by Where the way. government was like, "We're no, we're doing this. And they're like, no, you're not. And it yeah. turned into a standoff. And I think uh, incidents like Waco 
made the government now say hesitant. Yes. Yeah. And so they say, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to go in here and kill Gotta everybody. Approach it. Yeah. Much so I have the details here. So it was a. Uh, 21-year legal dispute in which the United States Bureau of Land Management obtained court orders directing Bundy to pay over a million in withheld grazing feeds, fees for Bundy's use of the land. Um, and from that point forward, uh, I have to get the rest of the article here. And sorry. he said, suck it. Yeah, he, <laughs> said, suck, he said, suck it. He had friends that said, suck it, and they all got together, I And guess. they were okay. But I think Waco um, really, if Waco hadn't happened, then something like that could have turned deadly. But I think they were like, uh, what are we going to do? Yeah. Because that's, you know, they're all staying their ground with, with their, you know, their right to bear arms or whatever. I don't yeah. know, man. Yeah, wow. So I've seen a couple of docs on it, but like Justin said, this was the first time I had seen that perspective and that type of footage. So it was, it's just a little three, three part series or whatever. I thought it was really interesting, wow. but it was that stat that really blew my mind. I had no idea that it was like that crazy. That's yeah. just was full on war. They waged with those people. Yeah. And they just killed everybody. Right. Yeah. Well, almost it, everybody. Well, everyone ended up dying because they, they, it got lit on fire. So there's, there's still to this day, like, oh, they're saying that they lit it on fire. It wasn't us. They killed. They did it themselves. Yes, that's the controversy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's 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 like controversy on uh, still about it whether they lit themselves on fire because the way the building caught fire was it, it started in like oh, yeah. like four or five different locations and one and one of, they have a report of like one of the snipers that was from ATF that was or not ATF but one of the one of the other groups that's over there supporting ATF. Um, <clears throat> that said, oh wow, we're he thought they were they were burning them out because the way the fire was going, it didn't make sense. It was it was burning in the opposite direction of the the wind was blowing. Yeah. So mm. somebody started those fires intentionally. It didn't like accidentally happen. Oh, wow. oh dude, it, it it's so frustrating too because like you you see opportunities where they probably would have like been able to resolve it a few times with like, a negotiator. Where, yeah, like so they negotiated in this one lady leaves to because they used her kid as basically a way for her to get this emotional pull and so she she finally kind of succumbs to the kid needs me and and you know they're able to get her to leave uh and and so that's all great but then now all of a sudden the news picks it up and then arrest her they arrest her and they say that like anybody that's gone we're going to prosecute immediately like what a fucking yeah. stupid. stupidest idea I've ever heard. Yeah. Like that's the message you're going to send these people yeah. that you're trying to get out. And even if you do it, you don't put it, you don't let it be yeah. seen on it makes television. you wonder, right? And, and oh yeah. This it, was, guy, it was a weird, one of the snipers had Koresh literally in his crosshairs and he was, had this like, like dilemma. He's like, I can take him out right now. And he's looking at him and I'm looking, they're looking at each other. And he's like, I could end this right now. And he's still, it still haunts him today. That he, he thinks he could have saved like all those people if he just oh, shot them. Wow. Yeah. Imagine but he PTSD. didn't have he didn't have the authority to do it, you know, and he's just sitting there like I could I could end this. Have you guys ever heard the story of the I wanna say it was a it was a Soviet um I think he was a sub captain, I wanna say, who prevented thermonuclear war between the, the Soviet Union I've heard and the US. This story, oh. yeah. That's on. That's on. That's on. There's a documentary about that. I have seen that before. Yeah, he was ordered to launch. They had false reports that the U.S. had launched um, nukes, and they told him to launch his uh, nukes, and he didn't. And thank God he didn't. Had he done it, we would have picked up a launch. We would have launched ours, and it would have been just yeah dust. Just yeah. But, but, obliteration. But he, but he literally went against his orders. He said, no, I'm not going to. And I don't remember what the reason was, but he prevented nuclear war wow. completely going okay. out. If Doug can find it. Did you find it, Doug? I did. Uh, his name was Vasily Alexandrovich Arkhipov. There, wow. There's a doc on it, isn't there? Yeah. Um, it was a so Soviet naval officer who prevented the Soviet nuclear uh, torpedo launch during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, wow. He did. They see him. We don't, nobody knows who he is. This guy should get like an award. His whole family should get awards. Oh, he did yeah. get an award. He did. Yeah, he got an award called the Future of Life Prize. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. The saving of yeah. like millions of people's lives. Good for award. Him. Dude, Justin, I want to tell you. This, uh, so I went down the rabbit hole the other day. I totally thought of you. Okay. I didn't realize 
Conspiracy how many, theory or aliens? Which one is it? <laughs> wow, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> or both? Is it? No, it's, it's well, it's so. I, I like that, like, now I'm this guy, right? I'm the, the tinfoil hat guy. No, this is cool. Yeah. I didn't realize how many ancient reports in, 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 in ancient societies and cultures spanning the globe, how many of them described UFOs mm -hmm. and similar descriptions. Yeah. You know, a ring of fire in the sky, a golden uh -huh. disc. Wheels in the yeah, sky. Yeah, spinning wheel spinning in the sky, wheels, yeah. uh, beings, different beings. Uh, there were reports of the of these giants, and these are all ancient reports that are you know <clears throat> thousands of years old mm -hmm. across the world. Fiery serpents. Yeah, yeah. How crazy! You uh, have to see the one that I I uh, put him on the unsolved mysteries one because I thought that was wild. What happened? Well, they had like what was it fifty something people at least, like yeah. fifty something people. This is an Indian reserve. Yeah, on this massive Indian reserve, and like within a I can't remember the period of time. It was a very short period of time. 50 random people all come in that they saw this UFO. That's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they even had footage of it, which was cool. It had like, it, it almost looked like tentacles that were dropping off little spaceships like uh, behind this mountain. It was trippy. It was really trippy. Like they had like some weird footage of that and even some like Bigfoot type uh, sightings and and all that. So that that was a that was a fun one because yeah. it had like incorporated wow, like, all these and myths. Yes. All, yeah, exactly. yes. it like incorporated like, all of it together. Like a precedent. I'm like yeah. you've got to watch this, bro. This is so like right up your alley. I love all that, and then I try and like ground wow. myself back a little bit too, and like okay, so what's sort of like science? What's their explanation for phenomenon sometimes and all this? And that's where I like start looking up things like phenomena like a ball lightning yeah that's real isn't that it, it's real it's real and so is like saint elmo's fire if you guys have ever heard of that no i just knew that was a movie in the 80s yeah so it had a great song behind yeah it. <laughs> saint elmo's fire Woo! i've been waiting to see that um oh. yeah so the ball lightning thing <laughs> it's, it's a trip because i think it, it does happen in storms and and it, it lasts a ball longer. of lightning, right? That like yeah. flies through the air. It lasts a lot longer than like the normal lightning strike. So it just it turns it. It's like a sphere, and it, it they've seen like phenomenon where it's floating, you know, around like a, like this orb that's just glowing. And two, I guess like glass conducts it even further, and they've noticed like it's actually even come through windows. Yes, in oh, people's okay. houses. Well, no, it's not even it's it's uh it's not even a, th a conspiracy theory or a paranormal no, thing. No, this is like a real phenomenon. Yeah, they're saying no, this is a real thing. Ball lightning. Well, that, and that's the thing too. So now you start thinking like, how many times have people reported like orb like yeah glowing objects, and like how many times has that been misreported as like a UFO? Uh, so I start thinking about the St. Elmo's fire one. Yeah, what is that? Weird. It's like plasma. So it's like it, it too. This is some kind of electro. Uh, static electromagnetic like energy that um, it, it, it like points of objects like glow. And so like they, they've noticed this on like uh, towers, like um, uh, power. Uh, uh, what do you call those? Like um, the, the structures were um, lighthouse. No, know. <laughs> no, like uh, um, power lines, like oh, power yeah. line um, towers, like so on, on tips of it, like the little glow. Oh, there it is. Right there, there. there was a picture right there, Doug, that pulled yeah. it up right there, the purple one in the top uh, left. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it, it's it's really weird. And I guess it's not like, it, it doesn't like heat up and it's not like damaging, but it does like interrupt a bit of the- Why do they call it St. Elmo's fire? Frequency. Was this described know. a long time ago? Oh, because I guess it happens, uh, I guess they noticed it, um, ships. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Sesame <laughs> Street. <laughs> that's where they first, that's where they I like fire. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. A is for Apple. I hate it. I hate um, Elmo. Elmo. Yeah. So I guess like uh, uh, sailors would notice it and it became good luck if they saw it like in the sky. And uh, so seeing Elmo's uh, was associated some saint. Have like you, that. were you into this shit when you were a kid? Yeah. Me too. A yeah. lot. Did yeah. you ever read about uh, spontaneous combustion? Yeah. Have you ever seen the pictures of it? Yeah. Of like, like, like there was- Do this, you believe it? Or is it like one well, of those things where you're just like- There was one picture I saw where there was literally, it was like a whole room was untouched. <sighs> And there was a chair, and the guy's shoes were still there, but everything else was charred, but just the room ash. was untouched. Yeah. And I think his wife was there, and she's like, he just caught fire and literally just 
like that that's so hard to believe for me but i like i i've seen pictures too like you said but i mean of course how are you going to ever catch it on film There's hey no what way. would you do if you saw that like you're hanging out with your friends <laughs> and your like, friend uh, just catches fire oh man just, that was really spicy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit he just, <laughs> not andrew yeah. I'd be like, yeah, look, oh, this blew up. Yeah, look, 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 look at that. Just the legs are left. The whole room, <laughs> the whole room is untouched. It's just a charred like skeleton. Dude now. just caught fire, and the legs were left. It's it's like what? How did that happen? I've no. heard some explanations like that they that they they were. Oh, and you know what they all have in common? They were really drunk. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like it's really some, some alcohol combo? That's of... what I read. I mean, I haven't read this since I was a kid. Oh See, if God. I saw that, if I'm hanging out, listen, we're all hanging out, right? We're all hanging out, having a good time, creating a new maps program. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Boom, Doug just explodes in flame. Wow. And then there's this dust there. I'd be like, what did he do? Yeah, God, yeah, what is he? That's what I would think yeah. too. Yeah. How would that, yeah, how would who did he piss off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I would think. Kind of have to. That was weird. I don't, I don't know. know. I miss Doug, but he must have done something to deserve it. I guess. <laughs> something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what happened so. if that's your fate you know, it's like, I don't know. yeah i used to there was a whole there was a series of books when i was a kid in the, in the library that uh it was like unsolved mysteries books mm -hmm. there was like 10 of them and each one was on a specific topic it was like yeah. the mothman yeah uh it was you know Loch Ness monster uh -huh. bigfoot spontaneous combustion and i must have rented those books out of the, uh, i at least read each of them 10 times yeah at least I, same what, what are those what what's the um what are what's that called where the symbols are left in like the cornfields and stuff what oh are, crop, crop circles crop circles yeah what so what's and i think one of the unsolved mysteries got into mm -hmm. like the theory behind those it has, is it like the well sound? there was a guy that got that, there was a guy that admitted to doing a lot of there's, them. there's oh been, really yeah. yeah there's been some hoaxes that have been exposed so you want to go th out with like um oh. Yeah. So it's like a rope and then they have like uh, a plank. Plank and then they just they they press it okay, down. So here's my favorite part of that. So before that dude came out and said that this is how I've been doing it, all the conspiracy theorists were like, This is impossible. How can anybody do this? <laughs> impossible. This doesn't work. Like this there's no and way how can like they make hours. perfect circles or whatever? And this dude literally had a piece of rope and a plank of wood. Yeah. And he would just step on the <laughs> and just a rope. <laughs> A rope, and then he scaled it out, and it's so just impossible. Yeah. And he would just create circles yeah. and shit yeah. with this rope. I didn't know that came out. Yeah, yeah, but but some of them are so geometrically like complex and stuff that people are still like, okay, well, yeah, yeah. There's ones that like, yeah, like super high up. It's like, and they're massive, and yeah. they like are. Perfect, well, my favorite right? is the response yeah, like to. Uh, uh, so remember that that gold disc that we sent out there that had like a very specific message. Oh, about in, humanity? in the nineteen seventy something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was like a sort of a, a mirrored version of that as a crop circle that like had basically like their response. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the other part is too like people want to see like alien and that so bad that like you you'll see people out there like reading any kind of like like electromagnetic kind of like yeah. signal or something you know to try and like associate it with so some crop circles never never ufo they never impressed me what impressed me are ancient uh things that are put in the ground that you can't see unless you're in an airplane and they've been around for thousands of years. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like the, uh, the something lines. The, uh, oh, Nazca lines. Yeah. 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 The, the, uh, that one Isn't show. Isn't there one with a big naked dude and his, uh, with, his, with his wang hanging out? There's like yeah. an old, like, you know, yeah. I'm like, wow, some 13-year-old ancient dude. <laughs> yeah, the Peru <laughs> this would be hilarious. Those ones right totally. there. Yeah, they look like they look like uh, like you would land a plane on them, or they look like a yeah, bird. Yeah, the spider that that's a, a famous one, and the the, the one the one man that's like on the mountain that looks like an alien, uh, one of the gray aliens. It has this like big head, and big eyes. Yeah, look at that. Like, how did they do that? The because monkey. you can't see them unless you're yeah. in space. But then and that's interesting that it lasted this long too, right? It's like uh, because of the dirt. As you uncover the dirt, it's like this clay or whatever that like is a different <laughs> yeah. color. Yeah, it's it, a, but like, yeah, there was people like activists that went down there and like ruined one of them. They had to end up like roping these off because dumbasses like will go down and like ruin ancient things like that. Idiots. That pisses me off. Speaking of ancient stuff, did you guys know Bluetooth? You know Bluetooth, obviously the technology. Yeah. Did you guys know the symbol of Bluetooth? I just learned this today. Oh, the Nor Norse god. The Norse runes. Oh yeah, it's like I it's, thought it was based off a of Norse guy. No, it's right. like a, there's like a uh, what? Was, what is that? So there's a Viking. It's a I had wrote it down. There's mm -hmm. a Viking that's well known. And they called him Bluetooth. Yes. Uh, uh, Why? His, his name was it was a Viking king, Harold Gormson. It's so funny that Justin knew this. 
<laughs> of course you did. Yeah. You just know a lot of random I shit, I got bro. another part to this. Do you know that you have too. a mind for podcasting? Like, how useless <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> would all that be, right? Listen, I fill in all the gaps of random. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Sal would just be talking to himself. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, exactly. <laughs> i just be over here, huh? Yeah. huh? <laughs> I can make stuff up, <laughs> though. <laughs> I, I can make things up and Adam will believe me, though. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's, it's, <laughs> He would have no idea. Through the power of suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> Justin can fact check me. No, Sal actually was a Norse. Uh, yeah, so anyway, he God was a, forbid Sal learns like hypnotism. He, yeah. he, was a, he was a Viking king. He reigned over a thousand years ago. He was well known for unifying factions of Denmark and Norway. So in other words, Bluetooth brings together technology. And they think his name was Bluetooth for one of two reasons. Either one, he liked eating blueberries. Or two, he had a dead tooth. Okay. <laughs> Blue. Here's a fun fact. That's about, that, you know his friends gave him that nickname? Yeah, yeah. So He had sure. a dead tooth. Hey, it's yeah. Bluetooth. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> old Bluetooth over here. Yeah. Stinky Bluetooth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, well, you know, another fun fact to Bluetooth and, and Wi-Fi, uh, you know who invented that? What? This lady that was like this beautiful actress from Hollywood. Really? Yeah. I forget her name, but- uh, She was beautiful, that though. That was the only thing. <laughs> But like you're, you're like, oh, I don't know, it's some dorky scientist guy. No, it was like this actress. Oh, I did know this. Yeah, this brilliant lady who just came up, like, came up with the concept of uh, Bluetooth and, and Wi-Fi and being able to kind of like uh, what's her name? The signal. Oh, Hedy Lamar. Hedy oh, Lamar. yeah. Do you know who that is, Doug? Oh, yeah, back in the day. She was, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, uh, why'd you say it like yeah, that? You know, yeah. She's gorgeous, though. Yeah. It's like, wow. You had a poster or two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gave that away. Cool. Doug, is, is that, is that burned in your memory, Doug? She, that she invented Wi-Fi? Yeah, and Bluetooth. Yeah, both. She, huh? she was a beautiful woman, wasn't she? Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. You like that? That was pretty cool. You like that classic, uh, that classic look. Yeah, I feel like oh, I, I, I missed my... I miss my era, dude. I feel like wait a I was second. Wait, wait, she died in two thousand. So when when did she come up with Wi Fi? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes. Lamar was mother of Wi Fi. Yeah. There's Hall of Fame for development. Of it, it's so some of the technology she came up with was way before, but they used they built upon they built upon her on her stuff and yeah. then made Wi Fi. Right. Yeah. So you like that style, huh, Justin? Yeah. So so when you and Courtney role play and stuff, does she do that? Does she? <laughs> <laughs> Did she put on a little Marilyn Monroe? Yeah, you know? like uh, I maybe. I have, mean, I I've definitely maybe. maybe. I've definitely you know, he bought likes her the, like like polka dot dresses. Yeah, and he likes the and, what's it what's that called the, uh, the Suicide Girls? No, fifties fifties. Yeah. Uh, it's like the poodle skirt kind yes, of. Yes, like, what is that called? Uh, that's that. What's that? What's that? Uh, yeah, I don't know the genre for yeah the for genre women, eras. I'm definitely yeah. I like I'll lean on sort of the greaser kind of <laughs> look uh when we're going out but yeah i i used to like try and convince her to do more of that where they do kind of the beehive um uh, really hairdo wow. yeah for for girls and so then, that's like, your the era. lipstick your yeah. era is 40s 50s yeah for you what's your yeah, era yeah. Adam? let me guess your 80s bro no no there you are 80s no, early 90s no, no, big no, hair i like bro i like the 20s and 30s dude i like the i like really the, like, yeah mobster like pinstripe suits and the. no i'm talking about for women not guys Jeez. oh for just I mean, <laughs> well and even the girls in that that like the, in really the, yeah yeah they wore the flat they I had mean, the, classic, the short yeah. hair and the flat dress yeah I, I like that really? classic i do like that classic look both men and women that era i just think you I, think that's the most attractive is what i'm saying well, I mean, Jesus. That's what I'm asking. Today, about. the girls are like pretty much nude. So. Yeah, but there's yeah, nothing. That's pretty damn attractive. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> use your imagination, let's, let's, Adam. Yeah. Well, let's well, just like that's take some bodies from today. And I like yeah. a classy look. I like yeah. old old school stuff like that. Twenties, thirties. Uh, like, I'm a seventies for sure. Seventies. Yeah, yeah, I can oh, see that. Oh, that's hippie. Like, nice. no, thank you, no, dude. Like Farrah Fawcett, or you know what I mean? Daisy yeah. Duke. Like the like the you like the crazy flowy hair. Maybe yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, looks like I'm barefoot. All right. What about you, Doug? You're the you know, one that's I am through all that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, back in the no. Doug's like '90s, 1890s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. I I love like the late '50s, early '60s. The styles. Yeah. I mean, they had very form-fitting uh, dresses. Mm -hmm. They dressed well. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wish we would go back to those days in a way. Yeah. This yeah. is what has prompted me to go out and wear a suit. You know, out yeah. to eat. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, people just, tried a lot more back then, for sure. They did. They you did. Know, they put themselves together. But you know what I think? You know why though? They didn't go out a lot. That's why. That's why I think they did. That. Really? What no. makes you think that, bro? You think they could afford to go out to dinner every day? Back Some people in the could. 50s? Yeah, of course. Of course. They did. Yeah. Of course, they still do. What do you mean? Of course. How often did you guys go out to dinner when you were a kid? Doug? Well, we were. 
poor, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But most people didn't have a ton of money to, to, to go out all the time. It's all relative. It's all, yeah, it's all relative. Yeah. It depends on who you are. Yeah. Okay. Dinner was only 50 cents back then, too. Yeah, so but you like, only made 25 cents an hour. I know, but I mean, it's it's all relative. <laughs> I think they still went out just as much and did. In fact, I would argue they probably went out more as far as like the, the socialization of people back then compared to now. You had to go to plays and movies and dinners and stuff like that. Well, I do they know. They didn't have. TV, they didn't have streaming internet at home. Well, you know, so no, like you're right. You're right. Because I do know that, um, that like live didn't... music was a thing all the time. Well, no, you're, right. you're right. Cause I know my grandmother, when I was a kid, when she'd take me to the grocery store and she'd watch us and she, she couldn't believe she's like, when we were go to the anywhere, we used to make sure that we looked presentable. Mm -hmm. You know, you ever go to the grocery store, you see kid, you see like slippers, kids walking around in pajamas, pajamas, yeah. Yeah. yeah, actual pajamas, like teenage kids in pajamas walking around. I just like going to Walmart and seeing what people <laughs> wear. That's the it, worst. It's my favorite. No, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you, Doug. I, I do. I think that there we. I miss that that era of just. And I I would go with the '50s too. I like the '50s because that's a uh, Bumpy Johnson. That whole movie is around that time too, right? That's uh, the '60s. Yeah, yeah, '50s, '60s, even even the '60s. I'd say it's mm -hmm. like that too. Is cool. Mm. But yeah, no, we're we're. Uh, I don't know, right? I I'm also the guy who wears you know sweats to work every day, so and I have for we're in two, fitness, we can do yeah, it two decades, you know. Yeah, this industry kind of ruined us for that. Yeah, I remember that. But when Transition. I go out, I actually so I, I I dress more comfortable in here than when I go out. I try and mm -hmm. and, and at least spice it up, same, a little yeah. Bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like Looks that. super nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a super somewhat nice presentable. Yeah. Yeah. I do my hair, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's I hilarious. I brush my lips, and let my hair down. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pressure your hair. Okay, done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm good. Hey, hey. So uh, I'm gonna you know, take us back to health and fitness a little bit. Have you guys heard of the theory, uh, cannabinoid deficiency syndrome? No. Have I? I've mentioned this a long time ago. I don't remember okay. saying that. So there's a theory that people who tend to suffer from, um, like mild forms of autoimmune type issues, um, you know, skin issues. People who's, who tend to have gut issues, uh, low levels of kind of chronic inflammation <clears throat> may have uh, a deficiency in endocannabinoids. So endocannabinoids are chemicals that we only identified after we started studying the cannabis plant. That's why they're called cannabinoids. Um, <clears throat> be, uh, anandamide is one of them. There's another, I can't remember the other one. That's, but anyway, they have functions in the body that modulate, among other things, modulate the immune system, help modulate inflammation. And for some reason, the theory is, is that, and this is gaining some steam, that some people just don't produce enough of these. They hmm. just don't produce. And so these people would probably benefit the most from supplementing with phytocannabinoids, which are cannabinoids found in plants like the hemp plant. So this may be why some people will supplement with like Ned, for example, it's a company we work with has, uh, you know, full spectrum, right? So it's got all the cannabinoids. Why some people are like, this is a total game changer for me. I've, everything feels much better. And other people are like, well, I like it, you know, but it's not like it doesn't change my life completely. They think that some people, this is like, you know, it's like having too low of a hormone or too little of a, hmm. of, of a particular neurotransmitter that supplementing with these phytocannabinoids helps bring your body back to homeostasis. So, so there has been reports of people that have felt like it's really, you know, helped repair their gut and, and issues like that. Oh no, yeah. no, that's not, that's not even, that's not even just reports. There's data on that. Yeah. Yeah. There's data that cannabinoids can have uh, uh, profound effects on gut inflammation and on gut health. They, in fact, there's their pharmaceutical companies are looking into using cannabinoids as a way to, to work on stuff like that. Tons of cannabinoid receptors all over the body, but the gut, very, the brain, the gut, the uh, what are the organs, the liver, um, very very densely packed with uh, with these uh, receptors. Yeah, you know, so this is interesting. Like we didn't even know anything about the cannabinoids, the receptors, or anything like that until we got into cannabis and allowing that to be studied. That's there. true. It's you know, the irony of that. It's also why it gets mocked too, because totally. the, those receptors are all over your body. Yeah. And if you have something that potentially modulates things like what you're talking about, yeah. then it has the potential it like too many to things. help yeah. so many things. And so I think that's also almost what gives it a, a bad rap where people kind of scoff at it. And they're like, oh yeah, cannabis, it's right? It's like the magical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Helps you plant. with everything, right? And I think that's unfortunate because of that, because it, it, it does potentially help so many different things for different people mm -hmm. that it gets kind of this like, I don't know. So 
so here's so to get more to, not to go too in the weeds it, they're called there it's a type of a g protein coupled receptor g protein coupled receptors sit on the outside of a cell when you activate them uh they tell the cell to do something on the inside so g protein coupled receptors are the most commonly targeted receptors by pharmaceutical companies so if you're a pharmaceutical company you're trying to elicit a response in the body you want to target these receptors because you know if you do, it'll cause something to happen in the cell. Okay. Mm -hmm. The cannabinoid receptor is one of the most abundant G protein coupled receptors in the body, if not the most abundant. So along the lines of what you're saying, Adam, when you take something that interacts with this receptor, like NED, use NED, right? Full spectrum hemp oil. Or let's say you go and you actually use cannabis, which has THC in it, which also acts on these things. And then you have people like, it helps my headaches. Oh, but it helps my, my back pain. Oh, this makes me sleep better. But this one gives me more energy. Helps my joy or pain. This, this helps my gut. And people are like, how can I do all those things? Well, this receptor is so abundant throughout the body. And we know that the cannabinoid receptors act like modulators. So in other words, it's like a, like, a, like a dim switch on a light. It can either turn the light up or turn the light down. Your body decides what you need. So when it comes to like immune issues, in some cases, it helps with the immune system. In mm. other cases, it helps bring so down the immune system. it's too overreactive, it kind of brings yeah, levels down. Yeah, it can bring it down or, or bring it up, up depending yeah. on uh, essentially what your body uh, needs. So that's why people have been, you know, uh, they've been so critical, but this, the science actually shows like, no, 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 there are broad ranging effects. And like, that's why some people, you know, they need this, they get that out of it. These people need that and they get this other thing out of it. Yeah. You know, before we uh, hang up and do our shout out, I want to address what I saw on the YouTube channel yesterday. And we've got somebody mm, who yes. is trying to pretend like they are oh, they're impersonating us. Yeah. And they're, and they're uh, trying to get people to text them to win their free prize or whatever like that. We, well, we don't do that. That's not us. Yeah. We it's do a not, scammer. We do not do that. It's There's no free prizes. You get a free program. We do one per show. And we let you know in the comments and, that and you won. That's right. So look out for somebody who's doing that. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, the unfortunate part about this one is, because I've seen people trying to do it before, but this person actually Photoshopped the logo that we have right. and then even <laughs> titled their name really close to what we have so it's you could tell it's not us because if you click on it yeah. and look at their page they have no videos it's it's not us so is that how see, you could tell that's yeah. right did you yeah did you basically do some you have to click on, it, on Andrew, it all yeah so it's it's a pretty common thing especially as youtube channels grow we we deal with it on like a pretty much a weekly basis at this point and they can just recreate channels all the time so if we ever push to whatsapp telegram that, that's not us yeah. We're always going to reach out to you and tell you where We're not going to sell you Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. We're never going to have so you, you know. text us. We're never going to have you. By, by the way, the along those person. lines, I know we're going long here, Doug, but one of my favorite things in the world ever is videos of people on the phone with scammers, hacking the scammers' computers, showing the scammers that they have control of their computers, and showing them their location. Have you seen these? Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. They're on the phone. The guy's like, yes, give me your banking data. Uh, and, he goes, like poetic and then he sends him a picture of the building, because they use satellite imagery, of the building, that he's and in? he takes control of their laptop. And you hear them in the background, oh, fuck, they have us. Oh, everybody, I'll turn off your computer. And he's like, I, you know, and they're all freaking out and panicking. It's I've, my favorite thing ever. I've never seen that. Oh, wow. it's the greatest thing. Oh, we're watching that after we get off. Oh, it's my right favorite. Uh, all right, do the shout out, because this this page So there's a guy going amazing. viral right now. I've, uh, probably hundreds of people have sent him to me now. Yeah. And uh, These are great videos. He is a uh, professional power lifter, and he's real kind of a, a wiry thin guy so he doesn't look like my, and he wears like a janitorial uh he acts like outfit. A janitor, yeah. yeah and they puts like a he has beard grown out and he's all hat on and stuff like that and he's mopping the floor always and he always goes around to like like the biggest most jacked dude that's either deadlifting or squatting or rowing or doing some like heavy ass weight and he will walk over and he'll like pick it up with one hand or yeah, he'll like, like mop underneath yeah it, he'll so. mop underneath it while he's holding it and does stuff like that so it's a it's a it's a good page the dude's super strong uh, what is it? It's Vladimir something, Doug. What is it's it? It's Shmondenko. Shmondenko. Vladimir, Vladimir Shmondenko. It's V L A D I M I R S H M O N D E N K O. Yeah, I've had an experience with this. I remember there was a yeah. dude at Gold's once I saw. He looked like it was 160 pounds, lays down on the bench, puts four plates on. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to go help him and starts repping him. Some people are just crazy strong yeah. and yep. not that big. Yeah, this dude is like that She's for sure. He's a freak. Hey, look, uh, most children's vitamins are basically candy. They're gummy candy 
and uh, you don't even know if they actually have what they say they have in them. Well, not Haya. Haya is not gummy candy. It's non-GMO. It's dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free. It's uh, it's appropriate for almost every kid, and it's not candy, and it's got the appropriate levels of nutrients that your kids need. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash Mind Pump and get 50% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, our first caller is Makai from New Zealand. Makai, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, Sal. Um, firstly, I just want to start off by saying um, thank you like for everything that you do. Um, I've been listening for a couple of years now, and um, I can honestly say that um, you guys are a big part of why I'm still here today. Um, I actually suffered from anorexia a few years ago, and um, I can... Uh, just listening to you guys, it um, actually helped me immensely of um, like just getting to a healthy way and being discharged from the hospital and everything. So I just wanted to say thank you for that before I ask you my questions. Hell yeah, man. Right on. Hell That's yeah. awesome. Um, so basically my question is um, I'm at a crossroads with my training at the moment. Um, Currently, I weigh about 54, 54 kgs, which is like 120 pounds. I'm about five foot six. Um, um, I have tracked in the past, tracked my calories and my protein, and I have been getting um, rough about two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight and been eating between 3,000 to 3,500 calories, but I'm just struggling to put on any weight or size. And my main goal is to um, just like, obviously just try to bulk up, get a bit bigger, stronger, but also just um, maintain a bit of athleticism because I have played sports all my life and I do still enjoy doing that. Um, and I will admit that um, I do love to train and I do so about five to six times a week. So, um, yeah, I'm just wondering what you guys' thoughts are. Did you say you're eating 3,000 calories too? Is that what I heard? Yeah. Oh, that's a good amount. That's a lot. Yeah. Are you, Especially with someone who struggled with anorexia. Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's, that's actually incredible. That's pretty good. Uh, you got a fast metabolism. All right. So do you have any of our programs? Um, no, I don't. All right. I've been just following um, a push-pull-leaks kind of split. All right. All right. Here's what I'm going to do for you. Because you want, you want to build muscle. You want to bulk up but you also want to have some athleticism, okay? Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do, and I like you too because you you came on here, you're young, and you you made yourself vulnerable, told us some you know some stuff about you, took a lot of courage. I'm going to give you the biggest bundle that we have. I'm going to give you the super bundle. The super bundle <laughs> has got uh, some of our best programs. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to start with MAPS Anabolic. Then I want you to move to MAPS Performance. And then from there, you could pick and go in other directions, but I like to go MAPS Aesthetic after that. I think that yeah. that's going to be the best combination. In that super bundle, we also have uh, MAPS Prime. And Doug, is that it? Is that all we have in there, or is there any other stuff in there that we have? Uh, MAPS Anywhere, is that now? Okay, and then MAPS Anywhere is in there. That's a good program for if you're ever away from the gym, but you want to keep exercising. But the, 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 the programs I want you to follow in order, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS aesthetic and continue to hit those calorie targets of about 3,000, 3,500 calories a day. And I think you'll, I'll think you'll do just fine. I think you'll put on some good strength and muscle. The MAPS performance, uh, you know, program is going to help you with athleticism. So you're going to have everything you need there. That's good. That's a good nine months of, of workouts planned out for you. I have, I do have yeah. one, I have one question in regards to your training volume in relation to your uh, athletic endeavors. How often are you playing sports or doing cardio uh, a week? Um, I'm not doing any at the moment. Okay. So I just, yeah, I'm not playing any sports. I'm actually just started my first year of university. So I'll be, I'll be focusing mainly on that, but I just still, I still want to be able to on the odd. You want to be off. athletic. You still want to be athletic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's per that, what Sal said is perfect. And I just want to make sure that you weren't doing you know, playing some sport three times a week in addition to training five, six times a week, because then that might be one of the reasons why we're not building or yeah. putting on size. I'd tell you to pull back yeah. on some of the training volume. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. so, so I'm all good. Um, I'm still training five to six times a week. You reckon? Yeah, no, follow, follow our programs as Anab they're laid out. Yeah, anabolic is actually three times in the mm -hmm. gym. But you'll be doing yeah. trigger sessions on in the other days. Right. Okay. Okay, so it is. 
Yeah, so there's still other exercise and stuff, but follow the program as it's laid out. It'll work. It'll definitely work. And then I want you, did you listen to our, any of our episodes with uh, Jason Phillips? Yes, I did. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so he, you, you could totally relate, right? He also yeah, had yeah. some anorexia and, and now he's like, he's got one of the best certification courses for for coaches and trainers. So good. I'm glad he listened to us. Follow yeah, the program. Yeah. Follow the programs my, that we gave. My you. main problem. Go ahead. My, my my main problem is just um having like accountability. Accountability. Sometimes I get caught away with going to the gym and yeah, just. No, I get that. Probably yeah. I get that. I get that. So um, you know, why don't we put you in the forum too? Let's get you in the forum. I want you to. Uh -huh. Give us, give us some, uh, you know, kind of some, some updates on how you're doing and stuff like that. That'll help with the accountability. Okay. Sweet as thank you so much guys. This, honestly, I can't, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Hey, sure. man, we're grateful for you. And I'm, thanks for staying up so late. I know you're over in New Zealand. It must be, what, what time is it over there? Oh no, it's actually only six in the morning. So oh, yeah, that's not too Thursday bad. though. Yeah, that's not too right. bad. All right, man. All right. Well, let us know yeah. how it goes. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. You got it. Have a good rest of your day, guys. You too. you too. Keep up the good work. Thanks, buddy. Well, we're taking that out of your paycheck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't help it. You know? I see a kid like that, talking like that. It's what do you want, kid? Anything you yeah, want. Anything, anything you want. <laughs> Anything the you kitchen want. sink, yeah. yeah. No, it's good though. I mean, like again, like a, a young. I, I get it, dude, because we want to set him out on the right path, and that's he's it. definitely somebody that's motivated to do the right thing. So I could totally. Feel hey, that. eighteen yeah. years old, coming off of anorexia, eating three thousand calories a day is that's pretty. Great, he's man. doing great. Yeah, yeah what, what a you he's know doing, reversal. Doing yeah. phenomenal. And if he follows those programs as they're laid out, I mean, he's going to put on some size. He'll put on some strength and size. No and problem. by the way, uh, for the audience that might be wondering why we didn't do a lot of conversation around food and adding a bunch of food you have somebody who <laughs> yes, no. had food had an issue with his relationship you don't want to put food. too much focus that's on right you don't yeah. need to put a bunch of stress especially if he's already eating three thousand calories guys eating good yeah. he's eating yeah. good yep. just train train a little more effectively and continue hitting that three thousand thirty five hundred range um you don't want someone like that to be hyper focused uh, on food and be obsessive. He's that's already right. been that person already. So that's the reason why, even though it sounded like a nutrition question, what should I do? And we didn't mm -hmm. even go there. But that's the reason there. why. Our next caller is Deanna from Massachusetts. Deanna, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi, guys. How are you? Good, Good. to meet you all. Good. How can we help you? Um, um, thanks for taking my question. I'm really excited for your answer to this one. Um, so this question is for those of us who are genetically predisposed for muscle growth in certain areas, or if you're satisfied with muscle growth in certain areas and how to modify your program accordingly. So a little bit of background. I'm 42 years old. I've been working out consistently for almost two years. Um, I've been, I'm started my journey doing a split program training to failure. And then when I discovered you guys about a year and a half ago, I realized I was overtraining, under eating, and then doing way too much cardio. So I made some changes, reluctantly gave up cardio. That was hard for me, but I completed two rounds of MAPS anabolic and um, developed a measure of glutes for the first time in my life. So I've been a huge fan of you guys since then. Um, so I'm naturally bulky on top. Um, I don't know if you can tell from the pictures I sent you. I've always had like a boxy figure. So when I started lifting, I felt like I kind of blew up <laughs> on top. It didn't take long to sculpt my shoulders and my back and my chest. Um, and looking back, I'm not sure if I even built that much muscle. It might have already been there, but this is not a flex or a brag. It's actually been a huge insecurity of mine. So um, my lower body is a completely different story. Um, I, I need a lot of work on my quad development, my hamstring, and some side glute development. So I'm currently doing a split, split program um, Monday through Friday. And my question, again, for those of us with the natural disposition for muscle growth in one area, how do we modify a program so that we can maintain what we've built in that area, but also get maximum growth in another area? So specifically, how would that look? I would love you guys' perspective on okay, that. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, hold we, on a second. We, we want to, we want to, we want to change the way you look. Can we not keep that? Um, can we not keep that? Yeah, you look. Well, hold you on. Look, we got to back up. I mean, it, it is your body, and we can do whatever. But I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the pictures. I'm seeing sent. the pictures right now. And this wanna, was after a couple of years of lifting. You want to change on. this? Let's back up too. Hold on a second. Do you don't have, change. Don't change this, please. Yeah. Do you have that TikTok? <laughs> hold on a second. I got another question. Hey, for by you. the way, did you? You're you're north of forty. Too. No, no, no. Hold are on. Are you over forty? Do also, you, do you have that yeah. TikTok filter yeah, where it makes you look like you're? Are you wearing? Are you using that filter on TikTok that makes you look like a kid? Because I swear to God. No. Okay, when you started talking, I'm like, oh, it's a, you know, it's 19 year old kids gonna have some fitness questions. 
All right, you got great genetics. I'm, uh, not, I'm not giving you any advice. There's no way I want you to change that. Yeah. Your shoulder, arm, ab, like you look incredible. Yeah. You. This is actually, you know what? This is conversations for, we need to get in your, this is your own psychological thing that's going on. And, and you've got to, we got to work through that. We don't need to do anything to the physique. Yeah. I'm sorry. My, yeah. yeah just, Art, we can't help you. No. <laughs> I'm out. No. <laughs> no, I look, look, all right, look, I'm going to answer your question now that we told you our opinion. Okay. Cause that's, yeah. that's our opinion. <laughs> right. You look amazing. Uh, I think you have, you're blessed with incredible genetics uh, for muscle building, which is great. Look, here's the beauty of strength training or one of the, the unique factors around strength training. It's the only form of exercise where you can pick and choose areas of the body to develop. So it's as easy as this, okay? This is as easy as it is. You look at your total volume for the week, and you trade volume from upper body to lower body. That's also, if you're doing, let's say, you know, for the whole week, 12 sets for shoulders, and you're like, you know what? My shoulders look amazing. I don't want to develop any anymore. I'm going to just do three sets for shoulders. Well, now you have nine sets left over that you could add to your hamstrings, or your quads or your glutes. And you could do this all over the place. So take your your most developed body parts or the areas that you're like, look, they respond so easily, so well. I don't need to do a lot of work for them. Take those remaining sets and then put them towards areas of your body that you want to develop. That's 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 as easy as it is. Just call me once a week and I'll tell you how good you look. You don't need to change anything. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'll work. I'll work. I'll work on this insecurity with you. Just give you me. Need give a me. A, give me a call corner. once a week. I'll just, me the, bo so the bottom does not look that good. It's so. It's like um, it, it doesn't match. My top is like whoa, but like I said, I spare you my butt pics, but it does not. <laughs> Okay. Okay, well, okay. Okay. So that's okay. So that's fair. Okay. So that's understandable that you, you, I mean, cause I, I, I think your upper body looks incredible. Now, if you say that your lower body just there, it, Sal's advice is exactly right. Then so some, you know, lay off of some days when you would normally do some shoulders or chest work and, and upper body stuff and just sub in yeah. more, more leg training and more, and more glute training. So that's are you I, following a maps program? Um, I was right now. I'm following a split program. Okay, which program? But not, not which map set? I plan on doing advanced after. I, w I would love oh, to see you, you on okay. aesthetic. Oh yeah, and, maps and, aesthetic yeah. aesthetic great. and hamstring focus glute sessions. focus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. have maps aesthetic? I do. I have maps and aesthetic. Maps aesthetic. I have. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Do that and actually put your focus as hamstring and glutes. Yeah. And make those your two primary focus. And, and then that it'll do the program will do the rest because it's yeah. designed to be that way. And then still, if you feel the upper body is still way more dominant, the volume. you just cut, just cut back on some of the upper body stuff. But yeah, yeah now you look, you look phenomenal. Hey, Deanna, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to answer right away. Okay. So right when I ask you the question, you give me the answer. Okay. okay you ready? All okay. right. All right. What yeah. year were you born? What year were you born? 1980. Oh my God. <laughs> she is 42. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, we're going to send you maps aesthetic and, and trade the volume. That that'll be that'll be your best bet. Okay. Are you are you in our forum or no? No, I would love to be. All right, Doug. Doug's going to put you in our forum and then we'll keep you up. That that's where you can tag me once a week and I'll keep reminding you. Oh, awesome! Right. Thank cool. you. I need it. All right, you got yeah. it. Thanks right. for calling in. Thank you, guys. You have, have a good, good day. You have a good All one. Right. Thanks. You too. Bye. Listen. I am glad we record these because if you're watching this on YouTube, okay, we're not exaggerating. When she was first talking, I'm like, oh, I got another kid on the show who's got a question about exercise. Then I looked up, 42 years old. Like, this is, there's a typo. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. Andrew will be able to add the pic the photos that she sent us to, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, her upper body is badass. Yeah. She's got one of those. Um, she's got the, she's definitely got the like competitor type jeans. I mean, if mm -hmm. that's two years of lifting and that's what her upper body looks like and I mean, not yeah. like not trying to get that, yeah. like oh, that I'm is... sure she's super hard about her lower body. I'm sure it looks pretty good already. You know, right. yeah. but I get that. Like wants to like Down match out. it. Yeah. To the, so yeah. I had, so my, my, actually my very first, uh, client that I got ready for a show, th this was her, this was her issue. She had great upper body, like great shoulders yeah. and arms and but her legs she had cellulite on the back of her hamstring she had issues she just her legs did not look sure. and so that was a main focus for us so i get it that like at first i thought she was just like overall she was not happy with her physique and i'm like you got to be crazy but i get i understand that yeah the whole you, balance thing especially when you're that 
well developed in one area it's not hard to be unbalanced so yeah and you when know. you're that what's cool is that when you're that well developed in upper body you can really lay off of it she could mm-hmm. do she could do very little very hyper focus very very ways. minimal yeah. of that and that's how i would I, that's basically if i was coaching her what we would do is we would scale back on the amount of upper body days down to one or two exactly you know and then exactly. trade it trade it in for more hamstring and glute bridges yep. and more more work like that in addition to her foundational days and aesthetic and then just basically Based off of what we see happening, we may even peel back more. I may skip every other week if her if her upper body still feels that dominant. She doesn't like it, but I mean, I, she looks incredible, man. Forty two. I know. On. Our next caller is Steve from California. Steve, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. Big fan of the show. Thank you, and uh, appreciate everything you guys do. And uh, before I get into my question, I just want to give you guys some background. So I started lifting consistently last May and I was trying to do a body recomp. So I was in a calorie deficit and lifting. <laughs> and in the beginning, I went to the gym three to four times a week. And eventually that turned into five to six times a week. And I'd always take my sets to failure. And everything was fine until a couple of months ago when I started noticing I wasn't able to lift as heavy and my performance started to decline. And then I started ha- uh, having trouble sleeping. <laughs> So it started with just waking up early, like around five. That wasn't too bad. But now it's like I'm waking up uh, multiple times a night, just like tossing and turning. It's like a battle. (laughs) And a month ago, I changed my gym routine. So I took a deload week. And since then, I've been going three times a week. And I'm also reverse dieting, but I'm uh, I'm still having trouble sleeping. So my question is, do you guys think I'm overtraining? And uh, should I take like a week or two off? And I could just use any advice. Yeah. So uh, you, you, you were overtraining pretty hard and it takes longer than a week to, to come out of that. So I would do, yeah, I would do like, uh, three or four weeks of deload workouts. So almost a month Mm -hmm. where really you're focusing on mobility. You're focusing on getting a little bit of a pump. You're just kind of remaining active. And then when you get back at it, do not train failure all the time. Failure can be effective, but it has to be programmed appropriately. Mm. Um, and even then, okay. you know, I, I would save it for more advanced lifters anyway. Um, I say after three, four weeks of kind of letting your body re- recover, I would do like MAPS Anabolic. That would be the program I'd put you on. Do you have that program? No, I don't. That would be the program I'd put you on, Steve. You don't like MAPS 15 right Okay. Now? Uh, I mean, yeah, we could totally do, do mass 15 as well. Um, I mean, either one would be great, but I, I mean, I think, what do you guys think? I think he needs like a few weeks of like, well, yeah, well, I up. think with mass 15, he's going to, he's going to be kind of forced to do that. You're only doing yeah. two exercises. a day. Oh, as, in terms of the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great, that's a great for yeah. a month at least. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah that's it. great. So, so go ahead, Adam. Yeah, no, I was just thinking to run, switch to that and just switch that program. That will naturally bring down the volume from what he's currently doing. And I think that program is a great program anyways. Two exercises a day, two exercises a day and don't train to failure. I think that's going to be enough to scale back on, on his body. I yeah. think that will give him some good recovery. So Steve, so in other words, we'll send you Mass 15, follow that program as it's laid out. When you're done with that, then go to mm-hmm. Maps Anabolic. Yeah. I and like, you'll be set. I like that. Okay. How long have you good. how long have you been reverse dieting too? Have you have you just really started to increase your calories? Uh it's it's been about a month and okay. um the, the scale is still the same. Oh, that's good. So I'm I'm eating I'm eating around maintenance right now, but before I was doing like maybe like 2000 like 2100 maybe calories, but now I'm like at 26. So Oh, okay. It's not too bad. Yeah, no, no, no it's good. Yeah, and you you said your sleep is still kind of like iffy or is there like what's your last meal during the day? Just I'm curious if that's a so, factor at all. Yeah, I'm doing like intermittent fasting too. So I, I break my fast at 11 and then my last meal is around six. Okay. So I, in that window. I think you should eat something in the morning because you're overtrained okay. and you're kind of recovering. It doesn't have to be a big mm-hmm. meal, but have like a, a protein meal in the morning. So like maybe some eggs, something like that. Or creatures of habit. Yeah. Or yeah, exactly. Creatures of habit's got a really good oatmeal with uh, with some protein in it but you know have like a protein meal um i wouldn't do a okay. long fast right now because you're, you're 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 coming out of a hole okay and then uh so i should probably just keep it light for like four to six weeks then yeah maps 15 will be the perfect program during yeah. that time yeah maps 15 and just don't don't be trying to hit prs follow stay off the train of failure out. yeah follow it's laid out That'll do the, that'll yeah. do the work for you. That with your reverse, reverse dieting, the advice Sal's given you too, I wouldn't be doing any sort of fasting right now. Eat eat when you're hungry. 
make good healthy choices and then uh, see how you feel okay. after that because like the weird thing is too like I, I guess my body's gotten used to intermittent fasting too so like mm-hmm. i just don't feel like hungry like i'm just you know like the only time i really feel hungry weirdly is like in the morning like around like when i wake up like at three in, in the morning so mm-hmm. like that's the only time so eat a small bowl of oatmeal watch what happens yeah small bowl Consistent of oatmeal in the, in, in the morning yeah yep. breakfast with some protein <laughs> yeah. i like to say breakfast what are you a hobbit yeah <laughs> second breakfast is <laughs> yeah that, that'll help for sure stimulate the appetite yeah i was just coming from that by the way too i was i had skipped breakfast i wasn't eating till two o'clock in the afternoon for quite some time i creatures a habit of oatmeal because I, I wasn't hungry so i'm like let me get something light and easy uh, within like literally a week, I've told these guys I'm like starving now in the morning. Yeah. So what's the what's the link for that? Does anybody, Doug? Do you know what the link is for Creatures of Habit? Uh, boy, let me look it up. I think yeah. it's creaturesofhabit.com forward slash mind pump, but I'll double check. Well, yeah. just so our audience knows, because I answer this question all the time. Anytime we talk about a product that we're partnered with or affiliated with, if you Google mind pump partners. Yeah. You find all the products, all the discount and codes. all of our discount links. Yeah, 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 so it is creaturesofhabit.com for slash mind link. pump and creatures is spelled with a K. Yeah, that's that's a good first meal. Okay. All right, Steve. And we'll send you all Maps right, 15 and, and we'll send you Maps 15 and Maps Anabolic, okay? All right, appreciate you guys. Thank all you, right, brother. You got it. Right. Thanks for calling. Yeah, that's see, that's the thing with failure with train to failure yeah. is that you will fry yourself so hard, so fast, and then getting out of it is just it sucks. So, I mean, he did, what do you do, five weeks of that? Or, yeah, or, yeah a few weeks of that, five days, six it's days a week? It's addictive because of the initial results yes. you experience with that and like how strong you feel. But yeah, it it, it diminishes. Yeah, quickly. if you program it right, you can really reap the benefits and mitigate some of the negatives. But most people yeah, actually- have, stay ahead of it. That's it. I wonder how long he's been listening to the show. It's like something we've been talking about for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Our next caller is Jerry from Nevada. Jerry, what's happening? How can we help you? Guys, how you doing? Uh, appreciate what you do. Appreciate your show. Thank uh, you. Question is as follows. Um, Sal, I heard you on a podcast a while back earlier this year. Um, you know, the story, you know, your whole story on fitness, nutrition, and how it's evolved over the years. Um, basically, 45 years old, have a wife and four kids, been coaching the NFL for the last 10 years, um, and exercise and nutrition is, have always been important to me. Um Due to the demands of the job, uh, it gets a little crazy during the season. My nutrition, my sleep suffer tremendously. I would say that exercise or the exercise portion, I'm able to fit in or squeeze in, you know, a little bit. Um, I do about, I'd say in the off season, about six days a week during the season, about four to five. Um, I'd say I go through this cycle where during the season, everything suffers. I put on about 10 pounds of bad weight in the off season. I end up really basically getting really strict to take it off, which is good. But then I just follow this vicious cycle. Um, basically, uh, what kind of uh, program do you recommend, MAPS program for me? And is there one that I could do during the season and out of the season that might be a little different or more beneficial? For yeah. Me? MAPS 15 during 15. the season. Yes. MAPS 15 during the season and then off season, I do something like anabolic. So, Jerry, you obviously know, you obviously know fitness uh, at a much higher level than most people. Have you experimented with yourself with like, um, you know, small frequent workouts versus longer, less frequent workouts? In other words, um, instead of doing like an hour uh, workout today, I did like three 20 minute workouts. That's one example. Have you tried experimenting that with yourself? I haven't done that like throughout the course of a day. I've done like smaller hit workouts at times just to fit one in maybe for 20 minutes, but I haven't like split it up. I'm telling you. So someone like you, yeah, this is uh, you really appreciate. Yeah, that. someone like you, this is. I think you'll like this. So y- you can split up workouts many different ways, but it's really remarkable. And I've been talking about this on on our podcast uh, for a little while, where instead of doing like a one one hour workout, which is traditionally what I'll do, it just works best with my schedule because then I can block off that workout, go to work, do my thing. If I have a day where I this is available. And I haven't done this for convenience, although I can see how this can help with convenience as well. I did this for performance where I'll take my hour workout and I'll do three 20 minute workouts and my body just responds phenomenally. Now I've done this with clients in the past as well. I did it for them for convenience. It wasn't for performance and all of them got better results. So it's, 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 I don't quite know what's occurring in the body, but if you look at old Soviet era studies on Olympic weightlifting, they experimented quite a bit with these kind of all day short workouts. And they also saw some pretty incredible performance effects. So maybe do something like that where you have like a suspension trainer available or bands or body weight. And you're like, look, I don't have an hour to do my workout, 
but I know I could do like three or four 10 minute workouts and they're not hit. It's not like I'm going and like beating the crap out of myself for 10 minutes. So I'm not trying to make up for the, for, for it with intensity. I'm literally doing like, you know, three sets of a strength training exercise rather than doing 10 sets of different exercises and just spreading it out throughout the whole day. And man, uh, the, the res- it's, it's pretty remarkable. I would love someone like you to do this because of your expertise to get some feedback. If it's feasible to do that. It may, I mean, definitely not going to be doing that in the season. He's not going to have the time to do that in the season. In the off season, he could potentially do that. Well, do splitting you- it up with splitting up, splitting it up during a season. Look at it. Also, he's got, he, these are varieties that he hit. He gravitates towards hit interval, CrossFit, Peloton P90 X. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I would recommend maps 15 as like your staple program during the season off season, I would run an anabolic type of program. Well, let me ask you this: Would it be easier for you when you're busy to do, like, th- like instead of one 45 minute workout, three 15 minute workouts, or 10 minute workouts, or is that is that does it matter? Is it is it? Either- I think that's, I think that's feasible during the season. Like right now in the off season, we're still busy, but not nearly as busy during the season. So I could do the 45 minute to an hour workout in the morning and all that. Uh, during the season, I think it'd probably be something worth trying. Okay. For yeah. Sure. I, I, mean, I, w- I might be able to get, it might only be two 15 minute segments, but it's better than none. Y- yeah. yeah. And then maps 15 will give you a little bit of a layout for what that would look like. There's, there's two versions. One's with the barbell and one's with the suspension trainer. So the, the barbell okay. version is what we call the advanced version. The, 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 the suspension trainer one, that's the version that's kind of for everybody. So you can see the layout and kind of see how it works, follow it as laid out or modify it. Uh, Cause you obviously know what you're doing. And kind of you know follow that format and see how your body responds, but uh, I, I think it, it, it's pretty remarkable how I had a PR in deadlifts training this way at, at 44 years old, and I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, you know, doing these kind of micro workouts, it's pretty it's pretty wild. Sure, I, I think in the off season that's fine. In season, four kids, NFL, travel, stress. Uh, I'm not pushing you like that. I'm gonna train you. I'm a 20 minutes. 20 minutes a day and that's that's all you need not hit not not high intensity moving like crazy two good barbell movements that's going to pack on muscle mitigate the stress yeah. in season you got a lot on your plate already and that, all the nutrition in and yeah know, go in that direction yeah more so than strength that, training that's the hard season. part i mean yeah. the, i would say it starts with the lack of sleep probably yeah. and then that leads to bad nutrition and that you know absolutely absolutely you and you don't need more that's not what you need right now like that, that's what you do is you balance it out in in season off season when you have a little bit more flexibility then we can get after the hour workouts or do the splitting a workout up two or three yeah. times in a day like sal saying but no, I would not. I would not let you do that in season. I don't. I don't think that's a, a, a good idea at all. But yeah, mass fifteen is great for that because it's a consistency thing. So at least you're getting that frequency. So you're still getting stimulation, getting that muscle signal, um, and so it's it's really remarkable like how little you have to do to be able to keep uh, progress going forward. Doug, you sent him over a maps fifteen and sent him maps anabolic also. And then Jerry, when's it? When is it? When does this start to ramp up? Because obviously, it gets going a little bit earlier for you guys to get pr- prepared. And we stuff like that. we usually like end of July, like twentieth or twenty second, something like that, and that's when we start training camp. So okay, um, prior to that, it's not too bad. So right now, so right now, you do have the time to run anabolic, which is what I'd run right now to get you ready for when the season starts to happen. When the season kicks in, then I'd switch over to Maps fifteen. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. You got it, man. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. the support. Thank you. No problem. Keep up good work. All right, yeah, Jack. All right. That's cool when you get someone of his caliber calling us. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, with, I, know. With I his, love it. But, you know, here's the thing with the smaller workouts is not to push him, not to push himself, but to break up the day. It helps with nutrition because he keeps uh, fitness on your mind. Mm-hmm. And it's less demanding on the body, not more demanding. It's less demanding. So my, my point with that was if he's thinking to himself, oh, okay, I, I think I'm going to do a – I think I'm going to do a hard 30 minute workout today. I bet you three 10 minute workouts, uh, you know, obviously would probably be easier on his body than the full 30 minute workout. And and also it sounds like based off what he said with his hit workouts is he's making up for it with intensity, which I get, but that's where people screw up a little bit. I, I, four kids, a profession like the NFL, 
getting to access to weights multiple times in the day, two or three times. No, you, not the weights. Like, it would be high, high interrupted meetings. It, it, <laughs> nah, well, no, it would be it would be body weight band. I mean, you can't do that. You can't do that right now. I, I could, totally could. Ten minutes, ten minutes at a time. Absolutely. Three. Well, now you're saying ten. You were originally saying three twenty minute workouts. If I, say, if you, it depends on the time, like the total time, right? It could be three five minutes. It could be. The, the, my, my point with it is is being active throughout the day tends to work out better than picking one block. Yeah. It sounds like he was leaning a bit on the intensity of the cardiovascular to yeah. kind of make up for that energy exchange. And I think that if he just realizes he can stick with strength training, but yes. like less and, and yeah. have it consistent, he's going to get much further than he would with this like spinning wheel one, approach. One 15 to 20 minute workout a day. For a guy, I mean, that that would be plenty. Is yeah, yeah for yeah. especially like his, with his background. Yeah, and, bro, the NFL, the stress level that these guys yeah. traveling and the well, I just mean, the interrupted meetings, like constantly, like he's just going to have his hands full. Like, yeah, crazy. I forgot yeah. that the Raiders were in, the, in Nevada in uh, in Vegas. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I saw Nevada and I was like, oh yeah, have, have you guys seen that that stadium? Yeah, it's, it's, sick. it's uh, remarkable. Yeah, it, it's I haven't been on stadium. I, I haven't yeah. been inside. I want to go inside. Neither they just I. got Jimmy G. So yeah, I'm gonna I guess I'm at the maybe Jerry will hear this and shoot us some tickets. Yeah, yeah. We'll make an excuse. We'll evaluate. We'll your come out there, go in see person. Our, our CPA, our marketing teams there. So maybe we'll come fly over there yeah. and, and see uh, the yeah. Raiders play. Yeah. Huh? An see. animal train you personally. Hook it up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We got a bunch of free guides that can help you with uh, almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, and you can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 